Have you ever been so hungover? Your head is spinning when you wake up in the morning and you're just confused on what happened the night before. That's me right now. Granted, I know what happened the night before, but my head is just out of there right now. But I need to make sure I got a video in for you guys. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fight through this because I want to be able to make sure I keep bringing the content drunk or sober. <laughs> What's good, y'all, man? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. Now, we're going to check out the one biggest problem WWE can never solve. This should be an interesting one. WrestleMania, great content creator, especially anything wrestling related. Y'all go subscribe to him. I definitely am. And I'm looking forward to this, man. WWE, the thing is with them, I'm not even sure exactly what problem he may be talking about. But the thing is with WWE, WWE. goddamn it, it's start playing by itself. It's the fact that Vince is so stuck in his ways and he doesn't really change with the times like he should, or you would think he would. He's still relying on old tactics that he's been using since the Attitude Era because he, he feels like he knows what's best for the business. And at certain points, he does, but there's certain points or majority of the time where we're just sitting here as a consumer, baffled and confused on what decisions are being made, who approved this to be on television type situation. And that's a lot of times what we, we have to deal with, you know what I'm saying? Just watching, like, it, it, you want to see someone do so great in a role that they're so supposed to be portrayed in and ultimately they end up, they end up floundering all over the place because WWE and management, they think they know what's best sometimes and ultimately it's not so let's see what problems that they probably will never solve or can never solve let's get into this he has a big problem now, unfortunately for the wwe and its fans it's a problem of their own making and one they're in no hurry to resolve even worse the company seems determined to repeat it with roman reigns china stars wrestling me looks at the one problem w maybe not creating new stars that's my guess wwe will never resolve be sure to subscribe and hit Maybe that that's, notification that's bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on problem. Facebook well, I mean, for exclusive problem. lists. A Brock Lesnar is a kind of wrestler who doesn't come along often. Mm -hmm. A performer who combines size, power, wrestling ability, and as seen in the last year, charisma. The WWE instantly recognized this when it signed him in 2000 and strapped a rocket to his back when he debuted on the main roster in 2002. However, the Brock Lesnar who wrestled in the WWE between 2002 and 2004 is much different than the one who returned in 2012. Mm -hmm. The WWE used Brock well when he returned to the company, with the Beast working some memorable matches against main eventers such as John Cena, The Undertaker and an extended program with Triple H. Unlike many of Lesnar's future matches, these were competitive bouts that saw Lesnar work 18 to 20 minute bouts. By 2017, Brock was working short matches, and although he wrestled house shows and pay-per-views, his appearances were limited, especially for someone holding the Universal Championship. Which is one of the things I, I, was, I just wasn't a big fan of when he came back and he became the Universal Champion. It's like, we never saw the championship. We barely saw the champion, and I get it. Sometimes overabundance can ruin the the buzz of that person. But when you're the head champion, you need to be seen every week, every other week, something. We forgot there was a universal champion. The motherfucker was chilling at home. I was like, damn, man, we got to get something going. So, yeah. Things didn't improve in 2018 or 2019 as Lesnar continued to dominate. A 2020 was an exception as Lesnar worked briefly before exiting the company after WrestleMania 36, returning at 2021 SummerSlam. But are they misusing a special attraction? A Brock Lesnar has reached the point in his career where he should be considered a special attraction, like Andre the Giant. As a long-time fan to know, there was never a need for Andre to hold a title as his presence alone was enough to command a main event. Mm. Andre's brief reign with the championship was both the recognition of his decades of work in the WWF as well as a means to set up WrestleMania 4's world title tournament. But Andre's status as an undefeated babyface might have seemed boring in theory, but in practice, the WWF found numerous ways to keep him interesting, including exciting storylines where he sought revenge on heels or helped a babyface deal with a seemingly unstoppable team. Even after Andre turned heel and lost to Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 3, 
Andre's first pinfall loss recognized by the WWF, they protected him and used him to help get others over. Even when his acromegaly, which shortened his career and his life limited his wrestling appearances, the WWE knew how to utilize him properly. Is this faulty booking? Mm. The WWE's problem with Brock Lesnar is that the promotion rarely uses him. When it does, its booking has been baffling, including some wonky situations, including an unnecessary decision to repeatedly put world championships on him. This is the thing I've talked about. Some of you guys may disagree, like, yo, he's the best thing right now. Of course, he deserves a championship. I can agree and disagree. I, I do think he's one of the better things, obviously, on whatever brand he's on. But at the same time, we're going back to that same well. We got to know at some point, Brock is not going to come back. No matter how much money you throw at him, he doesn't have to. So at some point, it's like, if Brock's not going to come back, who do you have on your roster where they could be the next guy up? Well, they can't be the next guy up if they're getting squashed. So they can't be the next guy up if they're not getting pushed. So these are things that WWE, they book for the, the short-term game, but not the long-term. And we've seen that so many times because they're doing it with Roman. They're booking short-term just for him. Long-term in game well, in his case, they may be booking long-term to set up a, 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 a particular story, but that's just for him. Everybody else is like, it's whatever, and it is going to cause problems in the future when the Romans are gone, when the Brock Lesnar's are gone, when these people that we call on, like they call on over and over and over to help out, are gone. Then what are you going to do? You're going to be left with the roster that you have, and did you build them up to be someone credible? That's the question. Lesnar and as fans know, Lesnar's limited schedule translates into limited title defenses, which ties up the world championship. Mm -hmm. The WWE's booking of Lesnar has often led to bizarre booking with storylines that defy conventional wrestling logic. Well, we'll admit this hasn't been their strong suit for the last 15 years. Yep. But Lesnar's ability to insert himself into matches on what appears to be a whim, such as 2019's Money in the Bank and the more recent Fatal 4-Way at Day 1, the complicating things has been the WWE's rare title defenses for Lesnar, a necessity due to his limited contractual obligations, but one which defies wrestling long-standing tradition of at least one title defense a month, which is particularly convenient for a pay-per-view. This is down to lazy Lesnar though. The WWE's booking of Lesnar has created more problems than it's solved in terms of building the WWE, but Lesnar is not without fault. Lesnar's work ethic has deteriorated since 2012. Lesnar's lackluster efforts are reflected in the brevity of his matches and his use of the same two moves, mm -hmm. suplexes and F5s for those who haven't noticed a pattern. Yep. Unlike limited workers like the Ultimate Warrior, Lesnar has demonstrated he can incorporate brawling, power moves and submission moves into his matches when he wants to. The challenge has been motivating for him to do so, a challenge the WWE has never seemed interesting in pursuing it seems like he's putting no one over. Mm. And it's fair to say that Brock Lesnar rarely puts anyone over, and as a special attraction, he shouldn't, as wins against Lesnar should mean a lot. And I'm okay with that in the, if it makes sense. For example, Drew beating Brock, that was one of the smartest things they did. It just happened in at the beginning of the pandemic. I, I think Drew would be in a better spot right now if he actually would have been able to beat Brock Lesnar in front of a crowd. I think we can all agree there. Him beating Brock was perfect. That was the one few times in WWE history where they really made the right decision and gave the right rub to somebody else, and Brock put him over. That was great. Outside of that, you don't really see it too much, and he shouldn't be losing to everybody, but... If you're trying to build up a new star, like they were trying to do in Drew, you got to have somebody that you put over. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know who, uh, you know, will be able to beat Brock. I mean, they did it with Seth. They've been trying to do it over and over and over with Roman. You know, it's not too many people that have, you know, been, been able to get put over by Brock Lesnar. So, it, it just, once again, it comes down to how they want to book their future stars if they – choose to have someone like Brock Lesnar put someone over new. Two wrestlers come to mind in terms of Lesnar giving someone the rub. The first is Seth Rollins, who defeated Brock for the Universal Championship mm -hmm. at WrestleMania 35, and again at that year's SummerSlam. 
The second is Drew McIntyre, who's strong it. showing against Lesnar in the 2020 Royal Rumble, and his win over the Beast at WrestleMania 36 cemented him as a viable main eventer. However, even in victory, a wrestler can make the loser look strong, something the WWE has done well with Roman Reigns, something which rarely happens with Lesnar. But there are far mm -hmm. too many cases where Lesnar dominates opponents and reduces main event talent to glorified enhancement talent. Kofi Kingston's 2019 loss to oh, Lesnar killed the Dreadlock Dynamo's main event momentum. Likewise, Lesnar's day one defeat of Big E with just one F5 did nothing to set up a rematch or show Big E as anything but yep. just another victim. Yep. The latest monstrosity was Lesnar's squash of Seth Rollins, Riddle and AJ Styles at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. So, is it worth it? Him squashing all of them in the way he did sucked. Because at the end of the day, he could have beat them. We figured he was going to beat them. Just but squashing former world champions like they're fucking mid carters and then killing fucking somebody damn near in Austin Theory. That was that was fucking hilarious and quite funny and entertaining. But the squashing of these world champs, not so much. Well, regardless of many flaws in the WWE's booking of Lesnar, it could be justified if Lesnar is a mega money draw who consistently boosts ratings, drive ticket sales, and sells a ton of merchandise. Now the answer is mixed. In terms of ratings, Lesnar's appearances do seem to help, but once he's off television, ratings typically go down. Mm -hmm. As for ticket sales, Lesnar rarely performs at live events and it's difficult to gauge the WWE's numbers for premium events on Peacock. One thing that is clear is Lesnar's merchandise isn't the same ballpark as Roman Reigns or even legends like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Lesnar's continued domination in the WWE has repeatedly weakened the roster, keeping stars from rising, or with Biggie and Kofi Kingston completely stopping their momentum. Yep. Lesnar epitomizes Mr. McMahon's vision of what a top wrestler is, big and bad, which has led to Lesnar living like a king which benefits such a hefty payday, an extremely limited work schedule, and a strong saying in his booking. It's also brought on cockiness, as Lesnar knows that Vince will never fire him. Mm -hmm. As we pointed out before, there's no reason to blame Lesnar for taking advantage of the WWE is a large yes, but his laziness deserves criticism. Worse yet, it's a leading to championship futility. Mm. And perhaps the worst part about Lesnar's recent build is that the title unification match at WrestleMania is a lose-lose situation for the WWE and its fans, no matter who wins the match. It's unlikely they'll go with anything other than a pinfall or submission finish, although there's no guarantee it'll be a clean finish, leaving mm. the WWE with a mess on its hands. If Brock Lesnar wins, the WWE will have wasted Roman Reigns' year and a half championship reign. Does Brock Lesnar need to win? No more than he needed to snap The Undertaker's streak, yep. an honor which more than a few wrestlers, including The Undertaker himself, think should have gone to Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. Lesnar has nothing to gain from defeating Reigns, but it's possible the WWE will take this route. A win by Roman Reigns is somewhat better in that a full-time wrestler gets the rub. Lesnar seems to be the next to lose to Reigns, and while both men have traded wins during their WWE careers, the WWE is making the WrestleMania match into the biggest encounter of their careers with both titles at stake. Lesnar losing would be the final step in Reigns' elevation as this generation's Superman in line mm -hmm. of Reigns' wins over nearly every WWE superstar on the main roster, including legends such as John Cena, Edge, and Bill Goldberg. Is WWE ignoring the past? Uh, the WWE is notorious for ignoring past mistakes, chief of all disregarding fans' wishes, and Roman Reigns' push could lead to even bigger problems than it's created with Brock. Judging by the WWE's booking, there seems to be no end to Reigns' title run. Mm. While Reigns has the benefit of being a full-time performer who appears on television on a regular basis and works house shows, the WWE's insistence on booking him strong over all opposition suggests the WWE intends to keep the belt on him for a long time to come. While Reigns has made some opponents look strong in defeat, the WWE often overbooks the champion, destroying any opportunities for rematches or even matches. For example, this is this is very true, man. This is the problem with having such a lengthy title reign that has brought people into question. Like, has it gotten stale? Because at the end of the day, it's no how you book it. You got to make it believable where someone could actually get the job done. He's ran through in the damn near in the entire roster, especially on SmackDown. Nobody on SmackDown, maybe Drew, really deserves a need, an opportunity, or could even believably get the job done and that's partly to wwe either not really making his opponents you know seem viable towards like for maybe a rematch or them not building up anybody new to even warrant you know saying roman reigns even having a match with them
Dapple Reigns' win in a triple threat match over Daniel Bryan and Edge saw Reigns pin both men at once, which naturally made Reigns look strong but makes his opponents look weak. In a similar way, the WWE had Reigns appear on Raw pinning Bobby Lashley in a meaningless match when it should have saved it for later. Reigns' Survivor Series match with Biggie was a non-title match that did not have to end with Reigns defeating him and especially pinning him cleanly. Again, the WWE spoiled another potential match between what could be two top stars. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the biggest problem with pushing Reigns so hard is that the WWE is overlooking one of its biggest vulnerabilities. What to do if Reigns was somehow taken out of action? Yep. Injuries are unavoidable in wrestling, but Reigns also has to deal with the return of his leukemia, something mm -hmm. which could take him out of wrestling for an extended period or for good. What then? Will fans have the desire to watch wrestlers who were largely treated as second-rate compared mm -hmm. to Reigns? This is One a good thing's point for sure, it'll up. lead to a future shock. The WWE's continued push at the expense of other WWE superstars is going to keep other stars from getting opportunities to compete at the top level, diminish fans' perception of wrestlers who are getting a push, and create a vacuum when Brock is not available or unwilling to continue. Mm. The same can be said for Roman Reigns, but as long as the WWE's booking things in the short term, aka hotshot booking, things are unlikely to change. What do you think of this situation? I enjoyed this video. I enjoyed this. It creates those type of dialogues that some people don't want to have. I'm I'm a fan of Roman Reigns' title run. I have been a fan. I can admit the flaws. I can admit the issues that they have. And I can admit that they're booking themselves into a corner. I've thought about this plenty of times. What happens, God forbid, Roman gets hurt. I mean, we just saw him get taken out of WWE day one because of COVID. What happens if he gets hurt and he can't defend the title? What are you going to do? You haven't built up anybody else. He's ran through the entire roster. And in the way that he's done it, no one really seems viable to be the next guy. What do you do? They're, they've booked themselves into a corner. And I don't know if they're going to be able to get out of this. Same thing with Brock Lesnar. Once Brock goes back, you know, he's not staying after WrestleMania season. He's going to go back home, chill. What are you guys going to do? What are you going to be left with? These are questions that WWE, I, they just, they tend to forget, man. They just book for the moment a lot of times and figure out the rest. And that's going to be a recipe for disaster. When everything is said and done, who are you going to have left? Who's going to be the next guy? Who's going to be the next person to take up after certain people leave? And if you don't have that next person up, you're just kind of screwed. So comment down below. Let me know what's your thoughts and opinions on uh, on this particular video. Um, do you agree with what WrestleMania was saying? Do you agree with some of the points I made or do you disagree and why? You know what I'm saying? I want to get your feedback on uh, this particular video. But I appreciate all the love and support. I'm going to try to sober up. It's going to be a tough one. I'm going to have a long day today. But I appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all in the next one. Peace.